see us where he's talking about almost yellow so it's just really glad I couldn't make it. Yeah. And the reason I couldn't make it is because I spent Saturday over in Jersey at the DreamWorks indoor water park uh, at the American Dream Water that's over in East Rutgers from New Jersey. Uh, just in time, my best friend Lavanya and her girl Pinky all came down from Massachusetts. It was kind of a late birthday gift for her. Her birthday was March, uh, May 26th. But I haven't, you know, really gotten to see her a lot. I mean, we've been friends since I was 60 years old, you know. So, a uh, late birthday present, uh, and, and, and I wanted her to uh, have a good time outside of Boston. I mean, how much fun do you have in Boston? Yeah. <laughs> well, she would agree. Right. So, okay. yeah, yeah, we had a great time. Uh, 81 degrees year round in uh, the Dream Works. Water pool park. So you were happy. I was well. It was 90 degrees outside, so it was like whatever. <laughs> but guess where I'll be come you know February, January? Yeah, I'm gonna be right over in New Jersey, uh, luxuriating in the wave pool. They had a wave pool that was pretty dope. Uh, it features salt water because the pool was not really that good for the body. Right, right. Uh, they had a 14, 14 story, 14 story drop. Water slide, which I did not partake in. I did not get down like that. None of us did. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and but they had a couple of other uh, smaller ones that I thought were tame, and I kept asking like, "Oh, just don't drop, no, man. We, we're gonna be fine." And I know they would smile and laugh as I walked away. Mm-hmm. And then later on, I'm screaming, ah! like I'm sure you, I'm probably didn't hear me where I'm from. Like I was screaming, like you know, it's like this. Uh, yeah, right. Abyssal. But it was fun, can't wait to go again. We're, we're talking about taking the team over there. I'm hoping you're not going to be the lone, uh, the lone out guy in the group and not wow. show up. It looks like that'll be cool. Yeah, it will be. And, 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 and if you put up much of a fight, I'll just throw you in the water. Oh my god. <laughs> you could probably throw me in the water. Check out episode three on our YouTube channel, uh, Film of Sessions Cafe, of course. And um, yeah, episode three. Episode <laughs> features stories about Boston's frugal bookstore and its co owners, Leonard and Clarissa. So, Paul, uh, he wanted myself up there when it was cold. That must have been a long time ago. Oh, yeah, you, it was freezing. Up yeah, there. yeah, I, I, you know, I'm down like that. Uh, yeah, Paul and he wanted myself up there. We interviewed uh, Leonard and Clarissa at the uh, frugal bookstore in Roxbury, and we uh, also interviewed uh, Nick Bucci up in uh, Northern Westchester, that's Paul's buddy. Yeah. And um, how's, how's Nick doing, uh, Paul? How are you? He's good. I haven't been able to see him much lately because he's been busy because he just actually uh, got a new house. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, so right. he's, cool. he's, been, yeah. he's been like busy renovating it and whatnot. Yeah, so I guess coffee. He's doing both, but yeah. I think so. He's super busy, so he can't even, can't even return my phone calls. <laughs> That it, it's come to that, huh? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, it's come to that. But uh, yeah, so this is the, uh, the episode that you can see now on YouTube of Session Cafe TV. Features an interview with myself and Nick Bucci, as well as, uh, as I said, the crew over at the uh, Frugal Bookstore. Uh, my Spoken Word album, second single and video, was released. Make sure you guys please check it out. Go to www. Philadelphiastyle.net forward slash KBS. Purchase the single, it's called Orgasmia. <laughs> and um, Dwayne Butler of the Tree Magazine is really, he's such a big fan of that thing. He loves it. <laughs> and features myself and Julia Robertson um, and um, Megan Lynn, right? Yes, that's her name, Megan Lynn. And uh, the tentative release for the journey to the spoken word album, which will feature five tracks, uh, all spoken word poems by, uh, by me, is uh, slated for June 15th. So hopefully it will be out and I'll be begging you guys to purchase. Last but not least, Sunday, July 18th at 10 o'clock a.m., myself and Kevon. Okay, I was hoping you wouldn't say that. Oh. <laughs> Keep on and I can fold, probably use a damn book golf course. We'll be uh, at the Roxbury Unity Parade uh, 2021, that's up in Boston. I'll be the master of ceremony. I just need to meet the new mayor. They finally got a female black mayor for Biden Paul. No. Uh, last <laughs> mayor uh, ended up going to work for Biden. So by the Paul, Boston got their first black and female mayor. Yeah, well, and 
any way you can, right? But anyway, I get to be here, you'll get to be here, I guess. Uh, I believe this is an actual live discussion. It's been opening up, you know what I mean? At, the, at over at the American Dream Mall, there was a big sign when you walk into the mall, right? And it said, you know, because we have a mask on. Right. Do we all have a mask? Yeah, I guess. I'm on the air. Yeah, we all have a mask on. <laughs> and there was a big sign that said, uh, masks suggested, I'm not, we, I'm not saying it's for right. but basically mass suggested, but not unless, uh, mass suggested something to the effect of uh, if you're vaccinated. But I guess if you're not vaccinated, they wanted you to wear the mask. Mm -hmm. So I put my mask on. Problem solved. Hey. Here we are. Yeah, that's it. No questions. Nothing. Uh, of course, in the water park, there's no mask because it's a water park. But the point that I'm trying to make is there's this thing now where they want you to be, you know, if you're vaccinated, you can act, you, you can walk freely around the world as if nothing's ever happened. But if you're unvaccinated and you're still, uh, you know, pigeonheld to the COVID rules, though there's nobody that's able legally, I think, because it would be against hip laws, I believe, to ask a person to show off their credentials. So, like about two hours ago, there was a Dwayne Reed super uh, drugstore. I needed some gums, candy, and some water. And there was a sign that said, again, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. If you are not vaccinated, we suggest you wear it. It's very quiet. Yeah, that's how it is in many places. So quiet? No. No, with those new, with those new restrictions. Well, yeah, they need to like, People are getting their arms stuff. Like, since there are certain states that are literally giving away lottery tickets, uh, college tuition. I mean, come on, like, they get the shot. And I'm, I don't even want to make this a political conversation. Dre, I'm going to turn your mic off. I didn't think I to speak. But I, I, I mean, like, it's fun. been over a year and a half. Okay? Like, just like everything else that affects humanity, it comes and it goes. Right? So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking if, if the CDC, as strict as it has been, is, 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 you know, telling people to fall back a little bit, I think it's incumbent of us to fall back. How, I'm just going to say this, and we're going to get into the next one. It's weird that when people were told that they had to put on masks and social distance and, and, and this, that, and third, everybody was basically saying, well, it's the law, you have to do it. This is the way that it is because I'm following the science, right? That was the, the, the overly viewed term, I'm following the science. When the same scientists say that you can take the damn thing off, you still have people that say, oh, no, no, no. They don't know what you're talking about. It's too early. But if the same scientists that said put them on are now telling you to take them off, but you don't want to take them off because you don't trust the science. Huh? Oops. You, you, you said it, not me. If you want to wear the mask, you wear it. If you don't, you don't. You right. Don't. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. But you know, a lot of people do not hold that same position. So the form. So that's what Swap. most of like, you know, most businesses are allowing you not to go in with masks and everything, but some private businesses still want you to, but I don't know exactly which one. But I assume probably it, there won't be any more. I don't know. I'm thinking that any I don't know. I'm thinking that the airlines are gonna begin implementing some kind of situation where if you don't, if you're not vaccinated, you can't fly. No, it'll probably just be if you're not vaccinated, you'll have to still wear a mask. So they're, they're not going to. They're not going to take in their their well, business. They're not going to not want people's dollars at the end of the day. So if you're not vaccinated, they're going to just tell you to wear a mask if that. But I, I can't see them putting taking away money out of their pocket. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. All right, you guys. We are celebrating. All this week, uh, the music of the legendary Prince, the icon word is used almost as obnoxiously overused as the word unprecedented <laughs> nowadays. But Prince is definitely an icon. I don't think anybody can dispute that. Thank you. And so today, being Monday, um, it's his birthday, and so all week long we're going to celebrate his music. But first, we're going to start off with our new jazz segment right now. Throwbacks and new jacks. 
that's you too, Dwayne. I want to get you on camera. So basically, you have this mix. from the radio show. We start our new chat segment featuring the lovely Suzanne Christine with her single levels. Again, the video came out this week. If you check it out on YouTube, we want to make sure and Eve Vaughn were at the celebrations here in New York City this past weekend for the level of video ring party there were two. One even had one word. After that, we heard from uh, Jenna Nation. She goes over roses. Jaquay hit us off with BC. Uh, Charmaine X with that feeling, and last but not least, we heard from Dante Diesel, coach that with bus facts. Now let's bust this. We got a guest in the building. I don't want to mispronounce your name. Kadian? Kadian. I might put out working correctly. Yeah. Katie and Snow, welcome to the Kerry's Corner Radio Show. Thank you. I feel like a rapper with a rhyme. <laughs> we got Miss Snow on the show, you guys. And she's an author. Uh, shout out to the way Butler Retreat Magazine was in the corner. I don't know if he's on punishment or if he's filming or both. <laughs> but thank you for introducing us to Katie and we are definitely honored to have her on the Kerry's Corner Radio Show. Thank you for so, yeah. so we have two books, you have four. We have two of your books here in the studio. Um, I can't say the full name of, of the first book. It's called Bleep Him and Keep It Moving, A Journal of My Life After Divorce, The Challenges I Have Faced and Overcome, right? And the word that I can't say rhymes with truck. All right, you guys, use oh, your mark. imagination. Mark. Truck him and keep it moving. Okay, and the second book that she brought in for us to check out the, the title is definitely very different. Black woman is queen. Pump her up. Pump her up. Pump her up. Okay, but I don't have my glasses on. I would think it says pump her up, right? <laughs> Why? Why would it say pump her up? Pump her. Pamper up. Pamper. Up. Pamper up. Okay. Let's let's let. I want to first talk about. Um, as a fellow author, it's always an honor to have another author. So let's talk, and, 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 and so Dwayne uh, uh, referred you to me while I was in Florida luxuriating a couple of weeks ago. And when I saw the title for the book, I was like, when the hell can we get this sister on the show? Oh my God. Like, we need to talk about this early. Okay, so the title of the book is Bleep Him and Keep It Moving. And I initially thought that what you were uh, suggesting was that women sleep with the man and keep it moving. But apparently that's not what you're saying. You're saying to hell with him and keep it moving, right? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about that. Mr. Cox is extremely interested in the title of the book. Go ahead, I'll listen to you. Let's talk about that first book. So my first book is about um, what I what the challenges I faced after I got divorced. And basically it's not about sleeping around, it's about learning to overcome certain challenges, certain difficulties in life after a break of our divorce. And moving on from it. So right. it's not about sleeping around, not about being <laughs> slutty or anything like right. that. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that though. There's nothing. I, I don't <laughs> have to say. Believe me. But I, I'm not encouraging that in right. yeah. She's not. I'm just saying it's all right, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I bet that you, I'm assuming you get a lot of questions like that, right? Because you yeah. can definitely take that two ways. Yeah, yeah it, it can be taken this way or 
exactly. the way that I took it or the way that it should be taken. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess all it's important is But that it's a thought-provoking type. It damn sure is. Yeah. I'm like, hey, yo. Like, wow, really? Okay. So, um, and is this I'm personal? Is that from personal experience? Did you? Yeah, it's, it's a non-fiction book. So it's, okay. it's a really bad. So it's self-help. Yeah, it's okay. a self-help book. Self-help book for all women. Okay. Um, especially, as I said, if you have been through a divorce. And it can be for men too. You know, right. you can read it as well. It's not a man bashing book. I right. know my, my friends think it's a man bashing <laughs> book based on the title. But right. it's not. It's, it's a book that's to help you learn how to pick up the pieces and move on. And the other thing is, you have to keep it official. Like, the biggest words on the cover are the words... F him. Yeah. Like those are the big words. So it's like, it's like it, a shock for me. Yeah, like exactly. get up. Like it's just F yeah. it and just keep it. Yeah. That is I salute you, sister. That's pretty dope. Yeah. If I clap words, I'd want to give you more, but I know that they never work in the same studio. Um but you definitely deserve an applause for that of course because she's not working with you. So black woman is queen is pamper pamper. Pamper. Yes. Let's talk about that book. So black women is queen. As you know that black women are the original um, queens of the world, yes. you know, before everything changed. That's what I um, heard. Yeah, you were. You know about Queen Sheba, Queen Necessary, all these queens were there before. So mm -hmm. we want to get back the idea of that we're queens, that we're supposed to be loved, cherished, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a, a book that's basically focusing on our mind, our body, and our soul to okay. kind of help us to kind of build up our self-esteem and mm -hmm. our learning how to do self-care and self-love. Right, okay, so it's not just about relationships. No, it's that about one is a total opposite. Okay. It has nothing to do with relationships. Oh, okay. It yeah. has everything to do with just taking care, care of, of you. you to be okay, go. To a black kid. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Now, uh, kids, you, you can clearly neither of these, neither of these two books are appropriate for the children, but you do have a children's book, correct? Right? Yeah, I have a children's book. It's called The Silent P. It's the teaching, Silent What? The Silent P. It's a teaching kids how to urinate quietly. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> silent P. Yeah. The Silent P. I didn't even thought about it like that. You have good titles. You have to. Cause you got people like me walking around. Yeah, it's very, very um loose, and it can be taken the wrong way. But it's about. Not about quiet. No, period. it's about silent about the, it's teaching girls about the period. So it's a book. Right. <laughs> Not about me. Well, I mean, damn, it ain't far off then. I was thinking, okay, the next thing it must be about teaching them the alphabet. But clearly, <laughs> so the, the silent period. The silent and the thing I was gonna eat fruit after this interview. I don't think I want to eat strawberries <laughs> and kiwi after this conversation. Somehow it reminds me of those menstrual cycle. Okay, so it's a. <laughs> not so much of a bad thing, it's a tough topic, but. Yeah, because um, every woman has a. Every woman, every, every young female is going to go through it. Why is it silent? I heard most women, when they have their period, it's anything but quiet. But you don't see it, you won't know it's there. Well, they see you know, it. We could be on our period, they don't know. So. Yeah, because see, I'm not going to say any names, but sometimes I think women in their 70s need to be on their period. I'm just not going to say any names, because I'm not. <laughs> I know you're but, yeah, I experienced a silent pee recently. Not that silence. It wasn't. <laughs> she definitely was too old to be having one. Well, I read about all of that mood swings and all that stuff that we go through when we are not here. Okay. Um, so it's a book for children between the ages of 9 to 13. Nine. Yes, because you can't have your period at night. Damn! Really? Yes. Imagine you're 9 years old and you're still watching Sesame Street all of a sudden. Your hoo ha is red. <laughs> Amazing. And you being the only female in this room right now talking about all these things, <laughs> we're all getting an education. Or maybe I'm the only one getting an education. I don't know. I, I, you know, I just. No. Dre, you're not allowed to talk during this woman's interview. Well, if you're a single sure. father, it's a great place to have it. Right, that's true. If you're a single father and you have a daughter, it's a great place to have it. I recently stole one of my children from a friend of mine. Mm. He, has, he has a daughter. She is. Just turned 12. Uh oh. And she bought the book. No, she had she dad bought the book before she had her period and uh -huh. she ended up having a period after. So he read it and wants to hear. He was like, thank you so much. I bought the prize, I bought everything for her ahead of time. So how come you don't have a book called the um 
solid WD. I mean, if you're gonna make a, a everybody in the studio look at me right now, you guys. I know you can't see. If you're gonna have a book about a, a, a woman, period, why can't you have a book that teach young mothers or, or first time mothers about their son's wet dreams? What? And you know what the crazy thing is? I've never in my life had a wet dream, ever. Like people used to tell me something was wrong with me because I never had a wet dream. A wet dream is when you're sleeping and, and you just, all of a sudden you just burst all over the place for no reason. I don't know because I've never had one. I don't know if you're dreaming about something you have no business dreaming about. But it's, it's, it should be discussed. You don't know about wet dreams? Yeah, I know. It's a great song by Prince too. Oh no, that was Vanity Six. Six. Oh. Anyway, I'm just saying, in your fourth book now, what is your fourth book about? So the fourth book is a short story. Should be about wet Oh my God, it's, um, it's, it's about trauma. It's a learning okay. to overcome trauma, like sexual trauma, molestation, okay. and stuff like that. It's called What I Wish I Told My Mom. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to make any jokes about that. That's not funny. Yeah. Well, not, a period is not funny either, but it's... Not funny, but um, in my book, the silent P, I also highlighted um, it's a great issue in the world. This is which is um, pure poverty, which is affecting a lot of girls in India, a lot of girls in Africa, all over the world. It's affecting a lot of them. How does poverty affect your period? Meaning they can't afford to pay for a Oh, okay. Oh, God. So they just bleed all over the sand? They're wearing. <laughs> So whereas we're, we're wearing center napkins, they're wearing like cloth rolled up, and that's what they used to carry on. And they can recycle it? And this is, yeah, well, this I'm recycled. I really want to eat this fresh food, so we're gonna have to. I didn't think about that though, because you have to be able to, it's tough being a woman, I assume. It I don't is, understand. it is costly. And then I have a neighbor, and you know, I, you guys, they're like, oh my God, he's gonna bring up a training neighbor. I'm not supposed to say training, transgender neighbor again. But I can't understand why any guy would want to be a woman. It's tough being a woman. It is, it is tough. It like, is. you guys, I always say you're the stronger sex. Because we can't have kids, men. That's true. You know, although some want to try. We can't have periods, although some act like they're on it. We can't have, we don't have, thank God, what's the thing you have at the, at the end of your life? Not at the end of your oh life. Oh my oh God. God. What is that? Metaphors. Metaphors. Metaphors, yeah. In fact, I was accused over the weekend because I was feeling a little weird. My best friend had the audacity to say, oh, I think you're having to change. I'm like, nah, I'm a guy. No, we don't. We don't no, have to change. Men don't, men don't go through those so do you have a book on menopause? No. Okay. I have reached that stage. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. I, <laughs> your books are based on your experiences. Some of them. That's why, um, okay, that's why you don't have a book about wet dreams. <laughs> you don't understand. I wrote the, the, the Black Woman is King Opera okay. during the pandemic because I was going through a self-care period where period. my friends and I was trying to self-care. Do self-care. Period. No, no era. No, no, no. Because it was during the pandemic, so it was like we're there doing stuff, pampering up, taking care of our nails, doing everything at oh, home. Okay. So I was like, I'm gonna write this book because I think it's gonna be helpful for a lot of people. You know, you're at home, you're not sure what to do, right. you don't have anywhere to go. So I, I think a lot of people it. know what yeah. to do. They were having a lot of babies. Hey, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so that's why your books are going to be good. So one more time before we have to go, let, let everybody so, know how they can reach out to you. So you guys control. can reach me. I, I don't have a website up yet. Okay. But I have, I have the Instagram. Okay. It's Kadian.snow. I also have Facebook. Um, it's So we need to know your Facebook. I tried to find you on Facebook and then I couldn't find you. So yeah, what is your um, Facebook? My Facebook is Kim Snow. Kim Snow. Yes. Okay, so K I M S N O W. All right, and again, your books are called, just edit that first one. It's F Him and Keep It Moving. That's my first book. Yeah. And my second book is called Black Woman is Clean, Pump Her Up. Okay. And my third book is called The Silent P. And my fourth book, um, which came out about two weeks ago, is okay. called What I Wish My Ex Told My Mom. That's dope. And not the topic, but the fact that you have such great self-help books. I yeah. applaud you, sister. Yes. You Thank definitely you. Do. It takes a very strong person to write these types of books, so I definitely applaud you. We're going to hang out with us during our show, Miss Snow. And thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you. Are going to autograph some books for me? Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, you guys, without any further ado, we're going to get out.
got a club classics mix going on. I don't care which one of you home to throw back to me, Jackson. 